Here is peace and happiness and leisure. Or no more work, every day or holiday, everyone dressed how they want, dancing and music in the early morning. Why don't you go and have a dance, girls? May we? They are just servants. I know. But why is Edith sitting there instead of dancing? Don't even ask. She's been like that for three hours. Edith! Why don't you go in? Because I cannot throw myself at them. I know I am plain, and I know no one wants to dance with me. But I might be spared from being reminded of it from time to time. I shall just retire and play to my solitude. Come quick, a seed is developing. Well, my boy, can you tell me what twice two makes? Two twice. Uh, <laughs> well, let me see. Uh, two twice. Well, that makes... That makes two two. Interesting. You have not learnt the required information. I have. It's there. Uh, I know it. You want to wriggle out of it, of course. You know it, but you cannot tell. Perhaps I may help you. Uh, get off! Oh, it's so sad when a big boy lacks ambition. Big boy? Yes, big. B bigger than all the others. I am fully grown, and I am done with school. I've graduated. Why, why am I sitting in this class? Do I not have a doctorate? Oh, of course. But you've come here to mature. Everyone has to mature. Yes, that's true. Twice two. Twice two. That makes... That makes two. 
and I can prove it by analogy. Once one is one, so by analogy, twice two is two. For what applies in one case must also apply in another. Your working is reasonable, but your answer is wrong. <laughs> what is logical can't be wrong. We can prove it. One divided by one is one. So, two divided by two is two. Correct according to analogy. But how much does one's three make? Three. Consequently, twice three must also make three? Well, no, of course not. That's not what I meant. I meant to say that... No, I'm not mature yet. No, you are far from mature. But how long must I stay in school? How long? Do you believe that time and space even exist? Suppose that time does exist. Then you should be able to describe it, right? So what is it? I cannot tell, but I know what it is. As a result, I can also know what twice two is without having to say. But can you tell? Of course. Then, then do. do. Time. Um. Time. Well, while we are talking, time flies. Consequently, time is something that flies when we talk. Now you are talking, teacher. And while you are talking, I will fly. Consequently, I am time. That accords completely with the laws of logic. Logic is silly. Meals can't be time. That is also good logic. But it is silly. Then logic itself is silly. Maybe, but if logic is silly, then the all the world is silly. And then the devil himself wouldn't stay to teach you more silliness. If anyone treats me to a drink, we'll go and take a bath. Aha! That is a postero Prius. You've turned the whole thing upside down. For you are meant to bathe first, then drink. <laughs> Old bat. Ho, 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 Beware of a big head, doctor. Call me captain, please. I am an officer. I cannot understand why I should be sitting here to get scolded like a schoolboy when I've already... Too mature. It is time to begin the quarantine. Oh, are you still here? What do you think of this? This bloke makes me sit here with all the other school children, even though I've graduated. Why don't you just leave? What? Leave? That's a very difficult thing to do. I guess so. But you may as well try. Rescue me. His glare is powerful. Come on, come and help us dance. We have to dance before the plague breaks out. Is the brig leaving? Yes, first of all the brig pulls out. There will be tears, my dears. Always tears. And when she is gone, let us get out of here. Is there no one happy in this place? Yes, there is. Uh, here, a newly married couple. My joy has no limits. I could die happy. Why die? Because at the heart of happiness grows the seed of disaster. Happiness eats itself up like a flame. It can't burn forever. It's going to snuff out eventually. And the moment you realise that, it does it. Then and there. Let us then die together, this moment. Die? All right. I fear happiness. It has cheated me. Life is evil. Humankind is to be pitied. Look at this one. He is the most envied mortal here. He is the owner of all the villas you see in the distance. He owns all these bays, all the straits, shores, forests, together with all the fish, all the birds, all the game. Everyone here is his tenant. 
the sun rises over his sea and sets over his land. He has a complaint too. Yes, and a very valid one too. He is blind. He cannot see. The most envied of all. He has come to see the brig depart with his son on board. I cannot see, but I can hear. I can hear the anchor bill claw the clay bottom as when the hook is torn out of a fish and brings up the heart with it to its neck. My son, my only child, is leaving to journey across the sea to foreign lands, and I can follow him only in my thought. Now I hear the clanking of the chain, and, and there is something that snaps and cracks like clothes drying on a line. Wet handkerchiefs, perhaps. And I, I hear it blubber and snivel as, as when people are weeping. Maybe the splashing of the wavelets amongst the sands. Or maybe girls along the shore, deserted and disconsolate. Once I asked a child why the ocean is salt, and the child, which had a father on a, a long trip across the high seas, said immediately, the ocean is salt because the sailors shed so many tears into it. And, and why do the sailors cry so much? Because they are going away, replied the boy, and that is why they are always drying their handkerchiefs in the rigging. And, and why does man weep when he is sad, I, I asked finally. Because the glass in the eye must be washed now and then, so we can see clearly. What is the meaning of that flag? It means yes. It's the lieutenant's truth. Red as the red blood of arteries set against the blue cloth of the sky. And no? Blue, like the spoiled blood in the veins. <laughs> but look how happy Alice is. And how Edith cries. <laughs> meet and part, meet and part. So goes life. I met his mother, and then we parted. And he was left to me. And now he goes. He will come back. Who is that? I... I've heard your voice before, if only in my dreams. It was, it was in my youth, uh, when we went on vacation, in the early years of my marriage, when my child was born. Every time life smiled at me, I heard that voice like a whisper of the south wind, like a chord of harps from above. Like what I imagine the angel's visitation to the shepherds would be like. She is the daughter of heaven. Is that so? That's the truth. You have seen most of it now. But you have not tried the worst of it. What can that be? Repetition. Recurrence. To retrace one's own tracks, to be sent back to the task once finished. Come back with me. Where? To your duties. What does that even mean? Everything you dread. Everything you do not want, but must. It means to forgo, to give up, to do without, to lack. It means everything. That is unpleasant, repulsive, painful to you. There are no pleasant duties. Only once they are done. When they have ceased to exist, duty is then something unpleasant. What is pleasant then? Sin. Sin? Yes. Something so good, it must be punished. If I have had a pleasant day, or night, and I suffer infernal pangs and a bad conscience the next day. Strange. I wake up in the morning with a headache, and then the repetitions begin. But now, 
everything has changed. What was before pretty is now ugly in my memory. What was agreeable is now distasteful. Witty, stupid, pleasure seems to decay and all joy goes to pieces. What men call success serves only as a basis for their next failure. My own successors have brought ruin upon me. For I view the fortune of others with an instinctive dread. They regard it unjust that fate should favour any one man, and so they try to restore balance by piling rocks on the road. To have talent is to be in danger of one's life. For then, one may easily starve to death. However, you will have to return to your duties eventually, or I will bring a case against you, and we will go through every court. Return to the iron pot, the cabbage, the baby clothes. Yes. We are washing all the handkerchiefs today. But why do I have to do it again? Oh, Life is nothing but doing things again. Look at the teacher. He graduated yesterday, was laurelled and saluted, climbed Parnassus, was embraced by a monarch. And today he's starting it all over. But you have to come home, Agnes. Please. I'd rather die. Die? That's not allowed. Firstly, it is a disgrace. So much so that even the dead body is subject to insults. Secondly, you will go to hell. It is not easy to be human. Here! I shall not go back with you to humiliation and dirt. I am longing for the heights. But first the door must be opened. I want to learn the secret. Then you must trace your own steps. So for all the annoyances, repetitions, tautologies, and recopyings that that will take. May your case come. But first, I must go into solitude and the wilderness to recover my own self. Goodbye for now, Axel. I must find someone else to go with. What is that? The lost souls. At Falstrand. Why do they wail more loudly than usual today? Because the sun is shining here. Here we have music, dancing, youth. They feel their own suffering more keenly. We must set them free. <laughs> Try it. Once a liberator came to Earth, they crucified him. Who did? The right minded. Who are they? Oh. Oh, are you not acquainted with them yet? Then you must learn to know them. Are they the ones that prevented your graduation? Indeed. I know them. I know them all too well. <laughs> <laughs>